Hey, Steve Mazzone here from Ocean State Running, and we're here with Classicals Connor Murphy and Max Schmidhauser um, within our Celebrating Seniors feature, um, which we are beginning uh, this season. Kind of, um, we want to kind of make, uh, give you guys a proper send off that you, you, you deserved um, with your um, outdoor season being cut short. But you guys have been with your team. Uh, Connor, you've been with Classical for four years, and and Max for three years, so you guys kind of been uh, been the leaders over there at Classical. Um, but again, we just wanted to uh, just kind of honor you guys for 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 all the work, the hard work that you did um, during your careers there. Um, so basically, guys, I'm going to ask you a series of questions back and forth. Um, pretty simple here, but um, I just want to welcome you here um, today, and I, I want to begin. Uh, Connor, let's let's start with you. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Connor. Um, was a state record holder at one point for 800 meters, doing it at the Hendrickson Invitational, right? 150.43. Yes. Um, a sub four minute 1500 guy, a two time state champ for the thousand, and also along with Max being on the state championship outdoor four by 400 team last spring and this indoor season this past year. Um, so, Connor, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, let's talk about, so obviously uh, COVID-19 kind of putting an end to your season. Um, um, talk about that. Talk about um, hearing the news that um, you're, you have to stay home pretty much. And, uh, and then later hearing this, that the season's been, been, um, been eliminated. Uh, talk about your reaction to that. I mean, yeah, so it started with uh, the Nationals meet, of course, Indoor Nationals meet. We were so a couple of relays, and I was doing the 800. And so that that sucked because we were all in great shape heading into that. And then outdoor, we were like, okay, outdoor, maybe we won't have the beginning of outdoor, but we still thought we'd have some type of season. But then it just kept getting worse and worse. And then we kind of knew before they canceled it, it was going to be canceled. But we, we've still been training. So the training isn't much different. But, yeah, it just sucks to not have um, things to like, look forward to. Other than the virtual meets have really helped. But, like, there's no state meet to try peak for or things like that. Yeah, and, and, and Connie, you've you kind of been a leader out there in those uh, virtual meets. I think you've been uh, one of our top guys in every week in the 800, in the – uh, the 400 this past week. Um, so you're definitely, it seems like you're definitely in, in some decent shape. But how difficult has it been to just not like being able to train with your with your teammates, pretty much having to run these things by yourself? I mean, that's not very easy. We actually, we get together. We try to get together every day and just like four or five of us and go for runs. We stay, or keep our distance apart. So that really helps. It's kind of something, a little bit of structure to the day. And Max, how about you? Uh, what was your reaction when you uh, you heard about uh, the season kind of um, being eliminated? Uh, what I think it was last week, right? And but but I mean, just hearing the news at the beginning with the New Balance Nationals being canceled, and uh, talk about your reaction to that. Yeah, uh, there was kind of like you know the immediate visceral reaction, like it was two days before. I remember it, I like. I couldn't sleep that night. It was like the Wednesday before nationals. And like, uh, that was the day it was like labeled a pandemic. And, you know, we had like a feeling it was coming, but they said it would, they weren't going to cancel it, but then they canceled it. And it was like that immediately like, visceral reaction. Like it really sucked. And like, I, I really hadn't had a great season other than uh, the four by four. Uh, so I was really looking forward to like being able to like run a fast time uh, at nationals and really like have a closure to the end of the season. Um, and, and like, you know, I, I was hopeful that there would be a season, but I knew, you know, as like time went on, I figured out like, you know, it's probably not going to happen. Um, so it's like kind of just been like a gradual acceptance. So it hasn't been that bad, but. Yeah. And man, so I want to talk about your PRs too. So 51 to 400 meters, 125 for 600. Uh, sub two for 800 doing 159.24. So, so very good times there. Um, talk about, you know, being on that four by 400 team though with Connor um, winning that again this year. So last year it was just 
an absolutely amazing race. Um, the the week before we we ran a three twenty seven without Connor, uh, and we we had a a great last year senior who who ran like I think it was like fifty four seconds. So after that, like we weren't ranked number one in the state or anything. We didn't really have any expectations going to the race. But when when we ran that time without Connor, and we know how much of a stud Connor is, uh, we knew that we had a good chance. And then it just Connor just absolutely willed his way you know he he didn't have the best day but he was not going to be denied in that race and that was the greatest kick I've ever seen it was epic and then this year you know we we were defending champs and we had everyone come back um our our second best leg actually was injured but we have a Javier Gomez is a excellent sophomore who who replaced Shalom really well um also uh Shalom uh and uh, Laurel uh, and Messiah uh, are uh, some other seniors who didn't do this, but are some of our excellent sprinters uh, who also, you know, their season work was cut short. Uh, but at, at, at the four by four indoor, you know, we we had something to prove. We we knew that this was our event, uh, and we you know we went out there and and we showed why uh, we won last year. Uh, and it was really disappointing because we were really excited to go for the state record uh, and nationals indoor. And then also the, the outdoor record's a little tougher, but we, we had a shot, you know, it would have been fun to chase it. So, so Connor, a two-time state champ for a thousand meters, but also on that four by 400 team, how can you compare the two um, being on, on both running as a team and as an individual? Could you, how would you rank them? Uh, four by four is without a doubt my favorite event. It, it always has been. I just love the team aspect of it, and it's all, it's the last event of the meet, so you just give everything you got for it. You don't think about anything else. And running for your team, that's better than anything. So it can all you get like those great performances in the four by four that you don't see as much in those other events. And basically, you know what Max was saying about that outdoor season. Um, I, I, I do think that was an amazing race from you. And I know, uh, I think you had tripped in that 1500 meters um, and you had something to prove. And when I saw that race, it, uh, I, I kind of figured that you were going to be running the way you did. Uh, talk about that race in, in particular, being on that starting line or being that anchor leg. Yeah, so there was the 1500, obviously that didn't go well. And then the 800, I came second, but obviously you want to come winning everything you do. So then the four by four, I was like, oh, you've got to just leave it all on the track and at least come away with something this week. And then getting up behind Doss definitely helps. Everyone knows who Doss is. And then Jack Perot from North Kingston, he passed me in the first 100 meters. That kind of like just told me like, oh, I got to go. And so for those last 300 meters, I just, you know, everything I had all out sprint in it. I mean, Doss was on his fourth event, but still, it was it was good to be able to chase him, for sure, especially LaSalle. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, guys, uh, next question I want to ask you is, what's been the highlight of your career? Um, uh, Connor, I'm going to begin with you. What, what's been the highlight of your four years at Classical? So, uh, that 4 by 4 at States was great. And then the, the 150, obviously. That always stands out. And just the last couple 800s I ran last year, the, that 800 and then New England and then Nationals, I, I kind of – I ran well in all three of those. So it was good closure to my junior year in that event. And, Max, how about you? What's been the highlight of your career? Uh, so I would say definitely the 4x4 the four four, uh, and then two others. Uh, when we got third place uh, in cross country uh, last year, uh, that that was that was really that was really special. Uh, and then and then also uh, not running but winning my second state championship in tennis. Oh, in tennis, okay. Um, what sport do you like better? I, I mean, what am I doing in college? I'm running in college, so I, I yeah I I grew up playing tennis, but. Uh, I've grown to absolutely love running. That's why I chose running over, over tennis. 
Yeah, and guys, let's let's talk about that uh, cross country team that you had. So last year, uh, I mean, this past fall, finishing fifth. The year before, finishing third, but also winning the Class B title for the first time. And you know, talking with you guys before, you said it, you think it was at least fifty years since they last won a Class B title. Uh, uh, talk about uh, about that in particular. Yeah, that was like our goal all year. We had a c couple of good seniors. Um, that year with John O'Rourke and Gizmo Martinez. So like that was our goal going in. We wanted to come third at States. We wanted to be the best public school and then win class B. Our athletic director is, that's all he wants. He wants class B titles. If you can't get state titles, get those class B titles in. So that was our goal and we did very well. And yeah, Max, you, you care to add on that? Yeah, I, I mean, that was just, it was really special. It, it, cross country is, you know, really like, I, I obviously I, I love track. Or, like I, I prefer the shorter events, but I absolutely love like the, you really, those seven guys on your, t on the team, you really like, you're, you're a family, you know, it's, it's all together. It's really like in cross country, especially it's like that tight knit group and you're constantly like pushing each other. And it's so, it's like, you're, you know, enduring pain together and just like seeing you know our successes it was it was very it was very special yeah nothing beats the team aspect of cross country i think because you like everyone relies on the next person and the person ahead of them you're only right. as strong as your fifth runner exactly so and who knows who your fifth runner is sometimes so exactly yeah it's great um, guys, uh, what is it that, that motivates you to do well? Connor, I'm going to begin with you. What, what, what's the, the main thing that gets you motivated? That gets me motivated? Uh, I mean, I just love, I love to do well. Like the feeling, there's nothing better than like the feeling, um, the night of like after you had a great race, it just, you can like relax and nothing really beats that. And my mother, definitely try to run well for her and yeah I, early on in high school you know you want to run well enough to get some college attention and then once you get it you just want to it's more so just about self so you know proud of yourself I guess after races and of course when you say mother you're talking about common girls coach and that's a boy yes um and how about you Max what motivates you I hate losing so much. <laughs> I just, like, I, I hate losing. Uh, and so I want to work hard until I don't lose anymore. And uh, guys, uh, we, um, track workouts, we all know that's a, kind of a love-hate thing, but we know how important they are. And, and um, what, is the, uh, what is your favorite track workout? Connor, again, I'm going to begin with you. What's your favorite track workout? Favorite track workout. That's very tough. Our coach, he rarely does the same workout twice, so I've had a lot of workouts. Um, ones that stand out are like max speed workouts. Like the week before our nationals, I remember in outdoor, we just did it. Was like an all out. It was like a 500. You stole 500 or something, and then a 400. And they were just all such fast pace, like faster, like faster than like my 800 race pace, even just so fast. I those are enjoyable, especially after you finish them and you just you feel so fit after them. Max, how about you? Yeah, he he stole the workout. I was gonna say uh, <laughs> it, was, it was the week before nationals. We it was a 500 uh, at like uh, race pace. So for Connor, that was like 150 for me. That was like 157. And then like 60 second rest, then 300 at race pace. And then like 10 minute break and then 400 race pace. I think it was like then like a five minute rest and then an all out 400. And I just remember uh, like in that, in that 400, uh, you know, you're, you're absolutely exhausted. And Connor ran like a 52 I ran like a 55 and I remember Connor afterwards was like completely blind like he couldn't see yeah I, re I always remember on the final straight of that workout I don't know what happened to me I like lost sight it was <laughs> I was just so fatigued 
I couldn't see anymore. That that was it was it's like such a hard workout, but it's so good because it, it it like shows exactly exactly. It was more mental. Like close to the meat, it's more mental just to show you how fit you are. Yeah, that's what um, Coach Okliski kind of wanted to do with us. I think Co- Coach O he he makes such good workouts. He's like I he is the greatest four hundred coach in Rhode Island history. I mean, like obviously his central teams have the state record in four by four. And then I think we, maybe we wouldn't have gotten the state record, but I still think we're like one of the fastest four by four teams in Rhode Island history because he's such an amazing coach. Like he yeah. can make, like, he can make like distance guys like, like Connor and I are more like mid distance, but he like got us to be good 400 runners and he can make some like 200 runners. into good 400 runners. No, I agree with you on, on coach. Um, and I, I, I ran for Cumberland High School. I know we had – all of us were mega competitive, and it seemed like every workout was a race. Is that kind of like what happens with you guys where a coach has to say, listen, I, I, I want you to run hard, but you're running too hard right now? He never tells us that we're running too hard. He said if you feel comfortable, then that's fine. So he doesn't want us to kill the beginning of workouts and then die off at the end. But he said he'll give us a pace, but he always says if – if you go faster than it, as long as you're comfortable. So we do end up racing sometimes, especially like in the shorter stuff, 200s. It all, it's a lot of, definitely at the end of the workouts, especially. Yeah, the, that, that last rep, oh, uh, like let's say we're, we're doing like, generally we'll do like a descending ladder. So let's say like the last thing we're doing of, of like the speed workout is a 200. Yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely try to beat Connor. But that like only, only on the last set where it's like just like, <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. And, and now, no, oh, go ahead. What were we gonna say? And and like that's the only distance that like I have like any chance against Connor. So. <laughs> now, now I know Coach always has you guys doing like you know some out of state meets that uh, Dartmouth, Yale, um, going down to New York too. Uh, what would be your favorite um, of those meets that you that you've done? My favorite in. Um, in outdoor, we always go to New York relays early on in the season, and that's always such a fun meet because, like, the whole team goes, not just, like, the varsity. The whole team goes, and it's always so fun, like, the bus rides. That's what, like, you remember about high school track, I feel like. Yeah. Um, you. From from cross country, I would say it's Maine. Oh, yeah, then in cross country. Maine yeah. every year. It's, it's, it's so amazing. Like, my absolutely favorite – uh, cross country meet by far uh obviously like we do nationals but uh other than nationals that that would be my favorite yeah i would say new york relays for outdoor now guys i'm gonna ask you some questions kind of related with track kind of not um what what what's the the go-to pre-race meal that you guys would would have before a race do, or do you have one i know runners are tend to be the most superstitious out of i think any athlete so how about you guys? Uh, I I tend to this is I don't know when I started doing this. I I'm a big cereal guy. I have cereal every morning. As long as my race is um, early enough in the day where I can just have breakfast, I like to have Lucky Charms. I, it makes me feel I don't know if it makes me feel lucky or whatever. Lucky <laughs> Charms is definitely my go-to. Um, I have a peanut butter sandwich just uh whole grain bread and peanut butter and a banana and then and then i make another sandwich it's like if i go to the meat and i'm like still hungry i can like snack on it how about a pre-race song or music do you guys have to listen to certain music before you run i'm not i'm not i've never really listened to music i listen to music but not really on race days i don't know why i never started that but yeah, there's no song I listen to. Nope, me neither. I, I don't. I don't listen to music like like before races. So guys, um, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? Something other than uh, track or cross country. What would be something that you would want to do? Like a sport or anything. Basketball. <laughs> Uh, I love love basketball. Yeah, I I actually, I I, uh, fractured my wrist playing basketball. Yeah, we made a bad decision in the indoor season. Right after, like, states, uh, we, like, we had a rivalry 
it was like the varsity <laughs> track team versus the JV basketball team. And it was like a big event, like who was better at basketball. And Max ended up breaking his wrist in the game. Yeah. Our and and then, he, he was so mad. And then if you if you saw, uh, I, mean, I mean, I doubt it, but like in New England, it's like I had like a full blown like cast and I was still running and it was so hard. But. <laughs> yeah, and guys, how about this? Um, Distance learning. Uh, what's your thoughts on, on doing this distance learning, being away from the classroom and having to do your classes basically through a computer? Being a senior, like it's tough to have motivation in these classes. Like we're just so close to the end and we've been in school obviously all of our high school. So having to get on a Zoom call and be taught through that when there's only like a month left of school is pretty tough. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, obviously teachers are doing their best, but it's yeah. nowhere near the same. It's really hard, especially if, if you know, I, I was already kind of checking out of school uh, when we were in school, so <laughs> it's, it's a lot harder. I, I mean, like, they're doing their best, but it's tough. And guys, any particular people uh, you want to give a shout out to? Definitely my parents, my mom and my dad. They got, got me into running. I was never a runner before high school. And then Coach Okliski is the best coach anyone could ask for, I think. He can coach you no matter what distance you run. And he kind of makes you love the sport with all his philosophies and stuff. Yeah, Max, how about you? I would say definitely my parents for being so supportive, like, in transitioning from a sport that I played my whole life into a sport that like I had barely done. Um, and then obviously Coach O, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be running if it wasn't for Coach O. You know, it's like as simple as that. Or, you know, or I, would, I wouldn't be running in college if without Coach O, there's, there's no way. Um, and then I want to say again, uh, I'm going to butcher his last name, Shalom Kpedja, K do you, Connor, do you know how to Pada. say that? The K is silent, it's just Pada. Pada. Shalom Pada, um, Messiah La Fortune, Laurel Butler, Levi Lewis, Ethan Ickin, Andrew Reyes. Am I forgetting? I feel like I'm forgetting. Uh, no, I think that's all the seniors. Uh, Baby Girl Tarly, Chelsea Garcia Baez. Uh, those are those are some seniors at classical that uh, you know also had their season cut short, and I think, in at least, mentioned that they should be honored too. And uh, guys, what's the best advice that was ever given to you, or any uh, inspirational quotes that were given to you? One thing I'll never forget was um, on the day I did one fifty. Um, I always throw up before my races and I was throwing up probably like 10, 15 minutes before my race. And there's a senior, he's a senior now actually, but he only does outdoor because he wrestles indoor. Evan Welser, he um, came up to me and he was talking, we had talked on a run once about how Bill Russell used to throw up before every one of his games, even regular season games. So he just came up to me. And he was like, remember Bill Russell, like, there's no problem with throwing up. And it kind of got me like so hyped up, just like that. He did that. I'll never forget that. Yeah, how about you, Max? Um, I mean, like, I've gotten a lot of really good advice throughout my life. Um, I guess uh, I would... Just be my parents, you know, being like telling me that, you know, it, it doesn't matter what I do, what I do as long as I, you know, give it everything I have. And that's how I should live my life, you know, choose what I want to do and give everything I have to it. Good advice. Uh, kind of, I want to get back to you. Uh, I mean, you mentioned about, you know, throwing up before every race. And have you been doing that since, since you're a freshman? Because I do notice that you do, do, do that. Uh, freshman year, the first time I did it was the class meet in outdoor. Um, and then, yeah, ever since most race, not every single race, but most of the high scale races, yeah, I, I do throw up before. 
whatever. Like at first it would affect me. I would be like, I would let it affect me, kind of be like, oh, I'm sick or whatever. But that only lasted like maybe a couple of races and then you kind of just get over and just like, oh, I have to race anyway. I don't, I, it actually makes me feel better a lot of the time. It kind of rejuvenates me or whatever. So I embrace it now. Yeah, because it definitely doesn't affect your performances, obviously, from, from what you've been doing. And I've always told, when I used to coach track, uh, I'm sure a lot of it's attributed to nerves, right, uh, doing that. Yeah. Um, and I used to tell my kids, um, if you're not nervous, then that, that's actually what makes me a little worried because that means they're not taking it seriously. Exactly. Um, so I want the kids to be a little nervous. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit of nerves, it helps. Um, and guys, uh, one last thing. Um, what's some words of advice you can tell to the younger runners out there? Now that you guys have, are some experienced high school runners, um, well, what's some good advice you can give to the young kids out there? I mean, one thing with these times, without a doubt, is to try and race every race like it's your last, because it could be. Like we had no idea what was going to be our last race. So definitely try to give it your all, even when you don't you may not feel good that day at least go out and try your best nothing can't hurt to try your best max how about you it's an everyday thing you have to work every day it's you know if you want to be great it's not going to be easy you have to put in the work and if you think you're working hard there's probably someone working harder than you well, guys, uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk with, talk with me today. And um, like I said, um, we kind of want to give you guys a, a proper send off. This is our way of doing it. But I, you know, I wish you luck in, uh, as you go off to college. Both of you are competing in college, right? Yes. Right. Um, so good luck there, but also good luck in, in life and in next chapter in your life. But, but again, thanks for taking the time. Uh, it was great talking with you and uh, best of luck. Thanks for so Thank you for putting this on for the seniors. No problem. You guys deserve it.